Thanks for joining us today on Leader to Leader. We have in the studio a very special guest, retired Admiral Cohen, who has over 34 years of military experience, as well as private industry working for Eastern Airlines and Delta Airlines. He's going to give us some great tips on leadership, how to be better leaders, and how to apply it in today's world. Enjoy this episode of Leader to Leader. We are honored today to have great leaders in the room and it's a virtual room however we actually have a couple of leaders that i would like to talk to and i would be remiss to even think i could do an introduction better than melissa bro the associate dean so melissa i'm going to ask you to come in and introduce this podcast and you can take it away Hey, thank you, Dr. Green. Uh, this is Melissa Broad. Uh, I'm the Associate Dean in the College of Business. Uh, honored to be invited to participate in your Leader to Leader podcast. Uh, of course, we're here with the head of the college, our Dean, Rick Fountain, and we also have a group of our German MBA students here. I appreciate you guys coming in. We just graduated our 15th cohort of that program. We have a 16th that's in play, and I think we have a student or two from that one and a brand new 17th cohort. And so we wanted to invite them in because our guest today is actually a graduate of our MBA program, Admiral Cohen, a 34 year military career, also as a pilot, just a great example of somebody who demonstrated great leadership, both in their professional career, but I also think as they went through our MBA program and I'm going to try to call you Casey. I'm a military person myself, as you know, I was in the army for a couple of years and it's just really hard for me to do that. Uh, to somebody that was in the service and had such a stellar career, but I'll try really hard. Casey and I, I just wanted to mention the first time we met, uh, I was in the Dean's office and you were actually looking for our current Dean at the time, who was Tim O'Keefe. Unfortunately, he had gone to a meeting. His office assistant brought you down to me and uh, mentioned that you had some questions about the MBA program. And I remember us sitting down at the table in my office and you said, I'm sure you've heard this before, but I actually started your MBA program a number of years ago and I finished everything but a single class. And uh, the truth is I did hear that a lot from time to time and uh, it almost never was true. But in your case, it actually really was true. And we talked a little bit about what it would take to get you back on track. And graduate and I thought that was amazing and I thought maybe you could just start by just talking about why that was important to you and uh, maybe how that ties into leadership. Oh well I would love to. Uh, You were so kind to not mention that when I started it was 40 years ago or zero. (laughs) So we had some catching up to do and I had just gotten to a point in life probably unique among your students in that I really just wanted to finish something I had started and I was interested in the education. I was looking for education, not a promotion. I wasn't trying to get ahead in my career. I had retired from my three careers. And as we've discussed many times, that turned out to truly be a very satisfying thing for me to do. And I obviously learned things in that MBA program and things that I still use today, even though I'm not professionally paid. I do a lot of volunteer work and some of it deals with with needing business skills. I was really glad that I did it, glad that uh, you folks at the university made it possible. That's how we got into it. It was successful for me and I hope it works for you and, and I'm happy to be part of the university. Yeah, that's great. Does that speak a little bit to some things that you think of characteristics that are important about leadership, you know, maybe finishing what you start or maybe setting a good example for others to follow? Sure. And let me think about that a bit as we go along. I will say that because you folks were kind enough to get me some links to some previous podcasts, I did a little homework. And uh, let me offer that, you know, two words that I heard a lot whether it was the coaches, whether it with your hospital CEOs, accountants, Dean Fountain himself, two words that I heard a lot were communications and Ali's favorite, which is authenticity. Two words and a phrase that I did not hear were vision, integrity, and know yourself. And I think... Part of what brought me back to the university was knowing myself, you know, what made me tick and what was missing and what I wanted to improve on. Happy to get into communications and authenticity, but I kind of like to talk a bit about those three thoughts because I was surprised in not hearing vision. Yeah, and Casey, I'm gonna jump in as I usually do. And I agree with you on vision 
and understanding if we could, and Rick can jump in as well, is understanding vision. I don't know if you're prepared to talk about vision as an organization, as well as the individual leader in an organization and vision. How do you get your vision out and then people to follow? Okay. Well, let me offer this thought too, as we get into the leadership in general, there's of course a big scale of leading. There are small team events. What comes to my mind militarily right away is that there's really a difference, big difference between being a young 20 something leading a small team of Navy SEALs into actual combat and being a leader of a group of engineers trying to solve a software problem or being the late Jack Welch running General Electric Corporation for 25 or so years. So there's a different scale, but in each of those cases, the leader has to have a vision of where we're trying to get to. You know, you have to have that yourself. Uh, Some people have great vision like Steve Jobs, but aren't so good at communicating it and getting their team on board. He was a tough person to work for. But every leader has got to have always that sense of the compass. What is the objective and where am I trying to get to, whether it's this small team, these engineers, or a big corporation? And I think the leader in whichever role we're talking about has to communicate that vision routinely. The team has to understand that objective. And and I thought about this, you know, you were talking with the the captain at the Naval Air Station, and that was sort of a crisis management leadership discussion after the uh, unfortunate shooting there. And then talking with your medical CEOs about COVID and trying to deal with something they hadn't planned on. In both of those situations, the leader has to have that sense of this is where we have to go. And he's got to communicate that sense, he or she, to the group, I think, routinely. You have to figure out how to explain to your group why it is you want to go where you're going, what that assignment really means to them as the group. And you've got to repeat that. It's got to be something that they hear frequently enough, especially in a crisis situation where the day-to-day, the hourly requirements can overwhelm the staff, if you think about that hospital. You've got to repeat that vision pretty often, I think. Kind of answer what you're looking for? It does. And I have to say that in a number of times with Rick and his vision is, I will say, trying to figure out how best to get that out. And so communication to me means communicating in many different ways to many different people, which then when you say that trust is a large part of that, because when you get in that crisis situation, you have to have trust that immediately you're going to do that vision. So Rick, what are you thinking on vision and what Casey is, or Melissa? Well, I, I appreciate um, Admiral. I, I was going to ask him what his handle was since we've had so many military uh, naval aviators and they all have handles. So. Well, at one time I was called Hollywood, but that was in a small circle. <laughs> My community didn't rely on uh, call sign so much. We've had a lot of fun. We did the commitment to continuous improvement from the Blue Angels and the something I think we've tried to implement. I'm going to back into vision with this was the debriefing so that you, at the highest level, you're critiqued on what you did right and what you did wrong. And I think if my vision, that probably sometimes the hardest thing for me is to convey effectively my vision because we've had a lot of moving parts. I I was giving a, a job description here. I'm not the typical academic, so I'm a little different than the other academic deans. And I, there were maybe 20 plus items that I have to have a vision for. So I, I, I'd like to think of vision is that we're going to be successful. We're going to have a culture of kindness and teamwork and that we accept responsibility if I'm the leader, but it's not so much, my vision is not so much that I'm always in charge. I'm listening to people. So my vision is to accomplish many things. And so I try to convey that vision. And then to get that many moving parts when you don't have a 25 person staff, we have a small staff and I'm blessed to work with both great leaders and they have many strengths, but my vision has had a little trouble. I think at times, how do you rein all that in? I'd love to say, well, it's just that we're going to be excellent in everything, but it's impossible to 
how do you quantify that? So how do you do that? And I think what Allie has worked with is that's why we talk about communication. We were talking about how did you communicate? How would you communicate your vision in a time of crisis? How do you communicate it on the best days? So I'm, in, I'm learning that I have to be able to more clearly express that so she can help me communicate. So that's the, I think the issue for me is we, we haven't talked so much about vision, but that's what we do every day, Admiral, is that we have meetings where we, instead of stepping down the hall and having a 10 minute conversation about, we have got to get this done. Now we have Zoom meetings all day long and we're tired at the end of the day. We're tired of talking and watching. I think my vision has changed a little bit to be a better communicator with what work we need to do and how we need to accomplish. And that's going around the world. I think it's amazing because when you were in a command level as an admiral, you had staff that did things and you knew how to convey your mission to them. I have Allie and Melissa both doing so many different things to help get the message out about my mission and then to execute on it. That's the hardest that I think for a leader is how do you execute? So sure. anyway, sure. I'll stop there. Well, That's I, a lot I more think... than I usually talk. <laughs> well, I appreciate the insight. You know, to Allie's direct question to me, I, I think you communicate in a number of ways. And I think Rick just kind of said that. You've got to communicate in writing. And again, it's a little different at those different levels of leadership that I talked about. If you're in a very small team and you really know each other very, very well, then communication almost becomes their, them watching how you do things and what it is you're talking about. If you're in a bigger staff situation, you certainly have to communicate in writing. And if you're in a far-flung organization like Jack Welch was in GE, you, you've got to routinely communicate the corporate vision, the corporate intent of what's important right now, this year, or maybe this quarter, the way business operates too much is quarterly results. So I think you have to do that. You have to communicate in writing. You have to communicate directly, verbally. And now, as we said, here we are zooming. It's a little different than we would prefer perhaps, but you have to sit down every now and then with your close supporters, your close staff members, and talk about the vision and where you're going and how they perceive how things are moving in that direction or not. I was also a fan of, of management by walking around. I think I probably overdid it. I think some folks I've worked with would probably say, gosh, that guy would never go away. He was always stopping by. But I'm a real believer in making those visits to the people where they work. And in fact, I heard, I think it was Allie talking about watching you, Rick, you go down the hall to get a drink of water and you come back with three students Velcro to you because that's what you do. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a positive. That's a piece of the leadership equation. It kind of gets also to that know yourself. Yeah. Every leader is different. Every leader does some things in a different way. Management by walking around was really helpful to me. And yet, and I know, I know Rick has felt this because I've heard him say it in one of the podcasts. When I was an admiral on assignment overseas, you know, I didn't have 10 minutes to myself all day long because that was the schedule that was created for me. From seven in the morning until seven, sometimes 10 o'clock at night, I didn't get to go walk around and manage. I was doing what I had to do from meeting to meeting. Sometimes the business of the day gets in the way of the style you would like to do, but everybody does have a different style. So that's my thought on the communication of the vision. You probably can overdo it, but not very often do you overdo that communicating. They need to hear it. They need to understand where the leader is going and why. And in different ways. And I would say, as Casey, as you were talking, a lot of things are coming through my mind. First of all, you were an accomplished professional and then came back to school to hone skills to finish something. And that was personal. So one part of our stakeholders, the industry, says this. We should, in College of Business globally, we need better writers, we need better oral presenters, and darn it, we need people who can understand Excel and use Excel. Those are the three things, ironically, that across industry say we want when students graduate. And you just very clearly stated why that is. So I appreciate that coming from you. 